It's the GTN Show. Welcome back. Can you remember your first triathlon? Or maybe you haven't done one yet. If so, you're in luck because today I'm going to be sharing some of the things that myself and the rest of the team wish we had known before we stood on the start line of our first event. We've also got plenty of your photos, race news and try news to share with you. Hindsight is an incredible thing. Just imagine if we knew what was coming up. That's why I am delighted to share with you today the things that Mark Fraser and I wished we had known before we went and did our first triathlon. For me, it's not actually that long ago and I can still remember. Now, the first one I want to start with is the swim factor. Yes, open water swimming in a mass group is unsurprisingly incredibly different to pool swimming and if you do all of your training indoors you can have a little bit of a shock when it comes to open water now i'm not trying to put you off here but learn from this and make sure you get some practice in beforehand i was a little bit ignorant to this one i came from a strong swimming background and just thought oh, i'd rock up to my first triathlon and swim in a group it was a little bit of a shock to the system to say the least and also practice with a wetsuit because it does feel entirely different and if you haven't done open water before you'll be pleased to hear that a wetsuit makes everything feel different but actually a little bit better and a little bit easier because you do float that much more easily so again practice with that and swimming in groups and maybe at the moment with obviously social distancing you can't quite get so close but before you do have a race if you've got one coming out later this season then try to get some practice in swimming in some groups or at least getting a friend swimming right in front of you or beside you so you just get that feeling of being close together because it's something that pool swimming doesn't replicate We've also got the good old jelly legs. Now you might um, have practiced and done loads of training in swimming, cycling and running separately, but when you put them together, it's a little bit different. Going from horizontal in the swim to suddenly running to your bike and then getting onto the bike is a really odd sensation and it's worth practicing that beforehand. It's not so easy maybe to practice the swim to bike, but just practice coming out of the water and trying to jog across the car park or wherever it is you are swimming just to get that idea. But then it's the bike to the run that really gives that sort of more longer term feeling of jelly legs. But you will be pleased to know that it does feel really, really odd to start with, but that feeling does improve. So if you start your running your first draft and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what am I doing? It will get better. But also, again, back to this one, practice will help. Brick sessions aren't fun, but they will pay off. In, even if it's just that mental preparation of knowing what to expect, and it also helps with the physical preparation, your legs will just sort of be slightly more adapted to it. Lubrication is key in triathlon. This was one that I didn't know. I mean, having done all of the events separately, I didn't really have an issue with garments rubbing, but add to that, especially in long distance events, some sweat, maybe lake water, or even worse, sea salt water, then it's amazing how wearing one garment for three different sports can add areas of chafing that you just never expected. So any areas that could potentially even give you the slightest of rub, I would recommend putting some lubrication on there, whether it's your shorts, your top, even your feet for when it comes to the run for your trainers, that just needs protecting. It's better to be safe than sorry, and you want to be obviously comfortable when it comes to your event. Now on to kit, and obviously it's one of the problems with triathlon, we do need a lot of kit, and it can be quite daunting. You don't have to have the top level of kit, but you do have to have kit that's working. So thoroughly check everything before, especially your bike, so you don't want any extra stresses on the day with things breaking or going wrong. And if you can have spares or things like goggles, then again, that just takes away any potential problems that might happen on the day. It means you're ready to deal with anything. And comfort is key in triathlon and something that put me off the sport for a little while because I used to train with some triathletes and I'd see them sort of going out for a run from the pool or running around the pool in their swimsuits. And I just thought, I am definitely not riding a bicycle or going for a run in my swimsuit. However, you don't have to. You might have seen the Olympics and thought, oh my goodness, that's what you have to wear. But you'll be pleased to hear that whatever distance you're doing, you can actually get changed between each discipline if you prefer. But tri suits have come a long way and they're a really comfortable garment that's flattering and you can find one to fit you. But to start with, if you're just going to do a race and you're not sure if you want to invest in a tri suit, you could either maybe see if you could borrow one. But again, you can change into different parts for the three disciplines, especially on longer distance races, you'll see that happening more often. Um, and the final two points that I didn't really realize, triathlon 
is such a community sport. So if you're really nervous going to your first triathlon, then do not worry because the triathlon community is just sort of there to look out for each other. And that's one thing that I certainly was pleasantly surprised at on my first event as everyone was just really happy to help and give any advice. So just ask, let people know you're doing your first triathlon. They'll be delighted to give you any advice and welcome you. And finally, that feeling of endorphins you get after each event. I really didn't expect to have such a great feeling of accomplishment. And you'll be pleased to hear if you have done one triathlon, that doesn't end. It's like an injection of endorphins. That's why I think our sport is so addictive. Anyway, that's sort of mine and the team's experiences. But if you've done a triathlon more recently or done your first triathlon more recently than us or can remember anything distinct from your first one, let us know in the comments section below. So hopefully we can share that to others who haven't yet done a triathlon or have maybe just done one or two and what they could learn or be prepared for in the future. You can do that in the comments section below. On to try news now, and I know there's been some incredible challenges and fundraising attempts during lockdown, and obviously we can't cover them all, but there's another recent one that caught my eye. It's 10-year-old Jonathan Collicott, who is targeting to cover 480 kilometers in the form of a triathlon to get himself from his home, this is all virtually obviously, from his home to Paris in France. Now he lives in Windsor in the UK. So he's already gone about the run to get him to the coastline. That was a total of 150 kilometers of running. Um, he's been doing this since April. He's then swam already 34 kilometers to get across the English Channel. Now he did this in open water swimming without a wetsuit, doing sessions between one and a half and two and a half kilometers, which I think is just utterly incredible. And he's currently cycling 290 kilometers to get the rest of the way to the capital of France in Paris. And he's doing all of this to raise money for the children's charity, NSPCC. And then when, um, I last looked, I think he'd raised over a thousand pounds. So great work by Joshua. Just, yeah, that open water swimming is what's kind of um, impressed me the most. Anyway, moving on to racing news. Ironman VR, you might have noticed, had a little hiatus, a little break this weekend. So they've had two weeks off, but they are back with the next block of eight weeks. So another eight races of Ironman VR. There's a few changes. They're sort of doing it in two blocks of four weeks at a time. And this is for the championship series. And within this, each four week block is gonna be highly regulated because athletes will be able to earn slots for the 70.3 World Championships. As a result, all the races will be either Olympic or 70.3 distance. And a slightly more relaxed format if you're not trying to qualify for the World Championships is the Ironman VR Classic Division. That's basically the same, but without such strict rules, so you can do it with your equipment that maybe doesn't sort of fit those rules and also on your own platforms if you want to. And then and finally, there's the VR Challenger division, which is again, more relaxed level, but it's still sort of that community based and you're doing an event each week. And moving on to some news that's all kind of related or brought about thanks to Challenge Roth, which sadly didn't happen, but would have been last weekend. And one athlete who was planning to race there as his final ever race was Luke McKenzie. He has instead announced his retirement after 27 years of competing in triathlon, 23 of those as a pro. So an incredibly impressive career with several victories to boot. Well, we wish him the best of luck with his future ventures. I'm sure we're still gonna see him in the triathlon community but just a shame he didn't get to sort of go out at Roth in style but I, like I say no doubt we'll see him around at events um, but it isn't just Luke McKenzie who was missing Roth Jan Fredino put up a post just sort of really throwing back to the race from previous years and saying what an epic environment it is and just really sort of what triathlon is about. Um, yeah, uh, Lucy Charles and Laura Siddle also putting posts up over the weekend and I think a few others as well. So it just shows how athletes are missing the racing but also missing that community side of things. Others are getting ready to race. Christian Blumenfeld and his fellow Norwegians have started to change their focus now on actually tuning up and they've been doing their first ever sort of swim, bike and run replication race already. So just kind of getting the mind into that different set of rather than just doing the training in separate um, disciplines and taking it further than a brick session. So it looks like they are getting ready. Um, Christian says here, seems like European Championships will be at the end of August and the uh, Norwegian team will be ready. So we look forward to seeing them race if that does go ahead. Uh, we've also got the Super League event starting again soon just for the pros at the end of this month. So it's quite exciting to see some of that coming back very soon. 
Um, someone there who's probably rather relieved that um, this season is kind of taking a little bit of a slower start is Sebastian Keeney. You might have seen on his social that he has broken his collarbone. However, he's not hanging around. He's already got his eyes back on getting in the saddle. He's on Zwift and already training hard. He's got enough um, physio tape to sort of keep him in, um, keep everything in check, I think. But yes, yeah, so that collarbone has been plated, so he'll be able to get back soon. But we wish him well too. And now for the race news. Yeah, I'm going to talk us through the latest virtual race news from this past week. Now, we did not have any Ironman virtual racing this week. It's had a week out due to commence again next week. Also, the Super League Triathlon Series has come to a close, but we did have the Z Pro Tri Series, which certainly filled the void because it was extremely exciting in this finale, the final round of this latest four-part series in which riders could collect points towards a GC standings, general classification standings. Not only do they get points from their finishing place, but also from intermediate sprints. Now on the men's side, it's Lionel Sanders that has been leading that quite convincingly. Although he's not actually won a race to this point, he's just been obviously very tactful in collecting those intermediate sprints. James Kunamal was also in the top three, although unfortunately he had a technical issue leading into this race. Race, it could not take part. So in the race itself, it was Lionel Sanders, Alistair Brownlee and Anthony Costas that quickly established a gap on the rest of the field. Alistair seemed very keen to push the pace and put the hurt on, but fortunately he also suffered a dropout or some sort of technical issue. So it seemed like Lionel took that opportunity, pushed on, dropped Anthony Costas, established a bigger gap yet again. He took the win, by about a minute to Anthony Costas. And then in third, we had Kenneth van der Rijska. On the women's side, well, it was Melanie Mora, Lucy Charles Barkley, and Ruth Assel that also gained a gap quite quickly on the rest of the field. But typical Lucy fashion, she also pushed on, dropped those two at around seven and a half K. But Theresa Adam came storming through, passing both Melanie Mora and Ruth Assel in hunt of Lucy. That gap came down to around 30 seconds at one point, but in the closing stages, Lucy pushed on again and pushed out to around 39 seconds. Theresa Adam taking second place and then Melanie Mora in third. So let's run us through the final standings for the Z Pro Tri Series. So on the men's side, it was Lionel Sanders that took the overall standings. Anthony Costas in second and Mike Phillips in third. And just a shout out to James, still in seventh place despite not actually having a finishing place or any points on the final race. Then on the women's side, it was Teresa Adam that took that win. So well done to her for pushing on as well and taking that second place in that final race. Lucy Charles Barkley in second and then Jocelyn McCauley in third. And now I'm going to take a look through some of your fabulous photos that you guys have been sending in to us and at least stay tuned until the final one of these because it is pretty darn cool. So first one from Peter from Brighton. This is his Trekamonda ALR5 with some modifications propped up alongside the fence here. He said he went out exploring in the wind. It was so strong whilst taking the shot, it blew the bike over. And th if that was this weekend, I know what you're on about because it was flipping windy. Um, so he's got, if we zoom on in here, some Q rings on there, some token wheels. He's got a rear hydration system, which I must say extends very far off the back of that saddle. You must have to reach around a lot for that one. We've got a bento box on there. And then, hey, I see what you've done here. You've got bar tape on your arrow bars, which matches your frame. Good work there, it looks very nice. Uh, next one from Stefan from Hatfield. He said, I've got this bike on the Cycle Scheme program, which is a Norco Indy 2019 model. Um, he said, he's just on the Ironman VR12, finished in time of 5.41.57, 229th out of 442 in his age group, which he's understandably very pleased with because that is very good going. He's been struggling with injuries, but he's just resorted back to his original position on the bike and he is good as Larry. So brilliant work there, Stefan. Well done on that finish. Um, next one from James, and this is from Vancouver in Canada. Um, he sent through his pain cave. He said, in the summer, it gets so hot in here, it turns the pain cave into what he calls a cook nook. Bit of advice here because I have a similar issue where my pain cave is, which is the kitchen. Um, get a couple of fans um, because it makes a world of difference. Maybe three if you can and open that window as much as you can. Maybe just get rid of the windows in the summer. Um, but yeah, that looks like a brilliant little um, uh, designated pain cave or cook nook as you call it. But finally, we've got this pretty darn impressive one. This is from Devendra and this is from Pune or Pune in Maharashtra in India. Um, he said he signed up for Ironman Talent just before lockdown was announced. Um, but he said this setup 
got him through um, and he's managed to get his training in. So he's got this treadmill, he's got a Wahoo uh, Kicker Core, I believe there with a Trekamonda SL5 on there. He's got a rowing machine um, and some sort of, I think that's like a crunch machine, I'm not too sure. But it doesn't stop there. I mean, if you're not impressed enough by that and the floor, which is incredible. Um, we have this, his gym, which, well, you've got everything you could ever dream of there. And it appears he's a very big Liverpool fan. We've got the liver birds um, up on the uh, wall there. And also, if we zoom in, we've got um, a little um, sign. I don't know who it's been signed by. It says, you'll never walk alone, which is obviously the Liverpool slogan. Um, so... Phew, very impressed um we'd love to know more details about that so please get involved in the comment section below um if that's it defender if you're watching this uh, but yeah please do keep sending through all your pain caves um, you can find the link for that uploader on screen right now or in the description below it's now time for caption competition and last week we had this photo of sebastian keenly grabbing his water bottle and we've got three runners up and a winner our first runner up comes from james simmons with such keenly attuned senses sebastian didn't even need to look at the road ahead uh Sian moloney coach's report says strong pull and exit but legs are still sinking yeah you'd hope you wouldn't be in that position in the water wouldn't you uh david bannister our final runner up did nobody tell him there was no baton in a tri relay? But the winner this week goes to Ian Moffat, who'll be winning a GTN cap with this caption Clavicle surgery went well, but there were some side effects. It's even the same arm, actually, Ian, so very observant of you. Congratulations. If you get in touch with us, we'll send you a GTN cap. And now, for your chance to win a cap next week, we have this photo of Peter Siddle, the former Australian fast bowler who is training for triathlon during lockdown. Well, make sure you share any of your suggestions with us. And that is a conclusion for this week's show. There's still plenty of videos this week, including one I'm quite excited to see. It's Mark coming up with his ultimate triathlon shoe. Now, I'm not sure how serious to take that one, but one that is a little more serious coming up later. It's five ways to test your aerodynamics. If you are into your running at the moment, you'll be pleased to hear we have restocked our shop with our running t-shirts. So check them out. I think the link should be on the screen anytime soon. And talking links on the screen, find that globe to subscribe. Give us a like if you've enjoyed this video. And before you go, there's a couple of videos you might like to take a look at. One is how to carry your phone when running. You can find that just down here. And if you've been having some problems with your feet, taking maybe a new pair of trainers or something, you want to know how to look after your feet. There's some tips from Mark just here.